It's the speculation video you've been waiting for. The after Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. <laughs> Hey everybody, pretty exciting news today. We have a brand new game announced and it's called Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, which is basically a Nickelodeon Smash Bros clone. Let's take a look. All right, so I just heard about this one. I threw on some Nickelodeon stuff and uh, yeah, I'm gonna take a look at the trailer here. Rating pending. I imagine it's gonna be E for everyone. All right, Michelangelo right off the bat. Ninja Turtles are Nickelodeon now. Lincoln Loud is newer stuff. Powdered Toast Man. Okay, that's old school Ren and Stimpy. And pretty obscure. Sandy, SpongeBob. I imagine a lot of SpongeBob characters. SpongeBob's obviously pretty big. Is that, that was Glove World, I think. That's cool. <laughs> the stages might be just as exciting as the characters. Oh, Blina! Oh, all real monsters! Nigel Thornberry? Oh, man. They're going for. Okay. This looks like it could be pretty good. Character choice wise. Alright, Lucy Loud. SpongeBob with karate. He's got his karate foam hand there. Helga. Helga Pataki. Okay, they're going old school stuff. Reptar! Reptar is not too big. <laughs> we have to wait for Ridley. We have to wait for Reptar here. Invader Zim. Okay, there's, there's my main right there. Danny Phantom. Alright. Leonardo. I imagine they'll have all the Ninja Turtles. Plus many more surprises. All right, I'll have to go back through this one. Because there's like so much stuff happening. I want to see the character moves. I want to see these stages. Like there, I see the Flying Dutchman ship. I saw the Technodrome. SpongeBob used a jellyfish net there. Fall 2021. So this wasn't completely out of left field. Actually, uh, we kind of knew about this game for a couple days now. Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl was listed as a Nintendo Switch game on Gamefly. I don't know anyone who actually uses Gamefly. I've actually never known anyone to use Gamefly, and I'm surprised it's still around, but I do still see commercials for it here and there. So yeah, anyway, this one was leaked by Gamefly a few days ago, so we sort of knew this was coming uh, and assumed it was going to be like a Smash clone, and now we've seen it, it yeah, that's exactly what it is. All right, so this is actually pretty exciting. I'm a big Nickelodeon fan. Um, you know, I grew up in the 90s. That was when Nickelodeon, like, ruled the world for kids anyway. Um, and this looks pretty cool. There's a lot of old school Nick stuff in here for me to get excited about. So, yeah, I'm actually pretty excited for this game. And potentially I could do some Smash-style speculation videos for what Nickelodeon characters we could get in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I think I'm actually going to do that. So before I get into really breaking this down and talking a bunch about this game, um, just some stuff you guys should know about me, I guess. Uh, here's a picture of me with Kel. I'm a big Nickelodeon fan. That is me, Kel, and a bottle of orange soda, which I got Kel to sign. That bottle of orange soda is now in my kitchen. Here's a picture of my kitchen, which is a shrine to Keenan and Kel and the signed bottle of orange soda I own. My living room has a shrine to my favorite Nickelodeon show, Invader Zim, and those plushes are signed by their respective voice actors, so you can see the Richard Horvitz signature on the Zim plush's forehead there. And of course, like any Nickelodeon fan, my closet is a shrine to Hey Arnold, but that one's personal. The idea of doing a Nickelodeon-style Super Smash Brothers game is just so cool to me. I really like Super Smash Brothers. I like the gameplay and stuff like that. But the thing that really draws me to the game is having all those Nintendo characters in one place battling it out. That's really the appeal for me, which is why I like discussing what characters we can get. And just gaming in general. I love having Smash being this celebration of gaming. And Nickelodeon is something else I also love, with tons of characters that... You know, I think it's really cool to see them cross over and interact with each other. And this game isn't even the first time this idea has kind of been explored. Over on Twitter, Nickelodeon Animation tweeted out this cool mashup poster of all the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate characters, or at least I think all the base game ones, or like who was in that poster for base game, as Nickelodeon characters. And there's some really obscure stuff, some really cool stuff they did with this image. Now, I seriously doubt that Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl is going to have anything even 
close to what's on this poster here, but um, it's cool to see concepts and characters we could get, um, and just the, this whole idea of doing a Nickelodeon um, Smash style game. Also, this one says Super Nicktoons Ultimate, but we're actually getting Nickelodeon all-Stars Brawl, which I think is a little wider um, appeal than just Nicktoons. All we've seen so far is Nicktoons, but it's just Nickelodeon stuff. So we could get some really surprising things that were maybe on Nickelodeon, but weren't necessarily Nicktoons. And I'd actually be pretty excited about that. Like I said, I got that orange soda bottle from Kel. If we got Kel in the game, you know, I'm, I'm main in Kel. That's awesome. Speaking of obscure and potentially non-Nicktoon Nickelodeon characters, um, I made this like a really long time ago. This I made in the Brawl speculation days where I just took the Melee roster, because that's all we had back then, and I made uh, Nickelodeon equivalents, or I tried to make Nickelodeon equivalents for the characters, um, and I, I posted this actually as a tweet um, in response to that tweet that Nickelodeon Animations made of that giant poster of Smash Ultimate characters as Nicktoons. Now, I won't spend too long going over this, and uh, sort of disappointing, actually, now that I'm looking at this, that I think only Zim is confirmed for uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl so far out of the characters that I had on here, though I suspect some more of these uh, choices that I had will actually make it into the game. So uh, I just want to go over this quickly, uh, simply because I thought there was some pretty cool stuff I did with this. Um, Keenan and Kel, I made Mario and Luigi. I thought that was cool. Again, I'm a big Keenan and Kel fan. And uh, Dr. Keenan, it's actually Dexter from Good Burger but I thought that was cool as Dr. Mario. Uh, instead of Bowser, we have Heifer. I thought that was cool. Clarissa's Peach just made sense to me. Zim, uh, Green, I think, was probably what I was going with there. Yoshi's Green. These next three I'm particularly proud of, though. Instead of Donkey Kong, we have Donkey Lips. I thought that was very clever. Uh, we have Artie, the strongest man in the world, instead of Captain Falcon. Again, I thought that fit real well. And then I have Bobby Budnick uh, instead of Ganondorf. Uh, I think it was just the red hair there that made me think, yeah, they kind of look similar. I I'll go with that. Um, we have Skeeter and Doug for Falco and Fox. I think, again, it was like a color scheme thing. A Skeeter's blue, Falco's blue, so it just, just worked. Though, interestingly, if we got Doug in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, it would probably be the equivalent of getting, like, Banjo in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, as Doug is no longer owned by Nickelodeon. Doug is now owned by Disney, so it's sort of like uh, Microsoft owning Rare and Banjo. I did Arnold for Ness, I guess just because they're both kind of like, you know, normal kids, sort of, and maybe because they both wear hats. I'm not really sure. We got Helga in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, so we do have a Hey Arnold character. I suspect Arnold will probably also be playable if Helga is. Is. Um, next up, I did Ren and Stimpy for the Ice Climbers. It just seems like a duo character. Uh, I think this was just looking at the roster. Kirby's smiling face in the middle reminded me of Face from Nick Jr. And that's sort of what I was getting at with the uh, fact that this game is Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. It doesn't necessarily have to be Nicktoons or what's considered Nicktoons. So honestly, getting like Steve and Blue or something like that is a possibility. And I think that's pretty cool. For Samus, I used Alex Mack, probably the most obscure character on here. I don't know if anybody remembers the show Alex Mack, but she could turn into, like, liquid metal, which I think was why I did this, because Samus is kind of metal. Uh, I don't know. That's what I went for. Zelda, I had be Angelica. I think I was just looking for a way to fit Angelica in there. And then I did all grown-up Angelica for Sheik, uh, simply just something that she could transform into. Uh, this one was good. Link and Young Link, I did Pete and Young Pete. I thought that was very clever with Pete and Pete, which is a great show. Um, Dag and Norb I did for Pichu and Pikachu. I guess they're just sort of rodent characters. Kind of reminds me of, uh, you know, Pikachu evolutions. Uh, Lori Beth as Jigglypuff I just found pretty funny. Um, Rocco I thought actually looks quite a bit like Mewtwo. Um, so that worked really well. That was sort of surprised myself with that one. This next one is one of my favorites. Stick Stickly as Mr. Game & Watch. I would love if Stick Stickly got in this Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I mean, that's, that's a potential main right there. I'd love to get Stick Stickly in the game. Though I don't think Nickelodeon and really acknowledges him anymore. Um, Tommy and Chucky, you know, just gotta have the Rugrats on there. They're such a big show. Uh, so I did that for Martha and Roy. It was mostly, I think, because Chucky has red hair and fit for Roy. Though, interestingly, with Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, so far we only have Reptar from Rugrats, which when I first saw Reptar, I thought, oh, that's super cool. I'm glad they're going with some obscure characters from these shows, not just the main characters. But I still sort of thought, you know, the main characters would 
be here. Um, but so far, we haven't seen a lot of, like, we have Helga, but we don't have Arnold, or we haven't seen Arnold yet. Um, and while well, I'm not too worried about, like, getting Arnold or getting Ren and Stimpy and not just Powder Toast Man, with the Rugrats, I actually am a little worried because maybe they don't want the babies to get beat up since they're babies. So maybe Reptar will be the only Rugrats character, um, which would be unfortunate because Rugrats was such a huge part of Nickelodeon. All right, anyway, moving past my dream roster from, like, 2007 or something, uh, let's talk about what we could actually get for this game or some interesting things about this game. Um, first off, really interesting are two of the companies that are making this. Uh, Ludosity is really interesting because they make Slap City. And Slap City is a really good Smash clone. So most likely this game might actually have some very good Smash mechanics going on and could make it, you know, quite the playable game, actually. Usually I just assume Nickelodeon games are going to be shovelware and, you know, not that good. But because of Ludosity on here and their history with Smash-style games, this could actually be a hidden gem, which makes it all the more exciting that it's a Nickelodeon Smash game that might actually be pretty decent. The other company to really pay attention to on here is Game Mill Entertainment, because they actually made another Nickelodeon game fairly recently that had a roster that's similar to what I'm seeing here. It had some obscure older Nickelodeon stuff on it, as well as some new stuff, so that roster is probably worth looking at to get an idea of what sort of stuff we might see here and what sort of stuff we might not see. So the game I'm talking about is Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 Grand Prix, and here's the roster for that game. Okay, so let's just go over this roster and uh, go down the list here. I'll just start at the top. Um, first character on here is my, my least favorite one and the one that I don't think fits at all in a, in a Nickelodeon game is uh, Jojo Siwa, I think that's her name. Um, I don't know much about her, but as far as I'm aware, I don't think she has anything to do with Nickelodeon. She's sort of the guest character here. This kart racer is specifically supposed to be Nick Toons, and obviously she's like a real-life person. Um, so not a Nicktoon at all, and as far as I'm aware, not really associated with Nickelodeon. So I'm not really sure why she was chosen as the guest character for this game. Uh, I really think they could have picked someone better, someone who has something to do with Nickelodeon would have been fine. Um, again, I keep mentioning Keenan and Kel, that would be so cool if we got them in uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. So, you know, if they had like Kel or Keenan there as the guest human character, that would have been great. Um, but Jojo Siwa... Let's, let's hope we don't get that in, in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl or anything like that. I really don't want something that has nothing to do with Nickelodeon. Um, just doesn't make sense. Uh, Steven Blue, like Nick, Nick Jr. characters, that would be great as like a, a guest character, as a you know, surprise extra character kind of thing. But uh, let's hope we don't get JoJo Siwa in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. I think there's such a cool opportunity for it to be a giant mashup of Nickelodeon stuff. And I'd hate to see it kind of tarnished with something that says nothing to do with Nick um, thrown in there, probably just to try to get some uh, other audience or fringe audience like preteen girls who maybe weren't going to get this kart racer, but they're like, oh, JoJo's in it and they buy it. Um, yeah, let's, let's hope we don't get anything with that in uh, All-Star Brawl. Anyway, moving on, next up we have all the Spongebob characters, Spongebob, Patrick, Squidward, Sandy. So far in uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl, I think Spongebob is the series that they've shown off the most characters for. They have Spongebob, Patrick, and Sandy, um, so potentially Squidward could be coming. I'd love uh, Mr. Krabs, Plankton. I feel like that would be you know, a pretty good um, Spongebob lineup right there. So I, I don't know how big the Nicktoons or Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl roster is going to be. Hopefully it's bigger than this kart racing roster. So with three Spongebob characters already in um, and Squidward in this game, it would be cool if we got like Squidward and at least Mr. Krabs um, in Nickelodeon All-Stars. And Spongebob's so big for Nick, so I could see it taking a, a large chunk of the roster. It's basically the Mario of, of Nickelodeon at this point. Um, and then next up here, we have an older, more obscure Nicktoon, um, Cat Dog. So it's pretty cool to see Cat Dog here. A uh, cool thing with Cat Dog is that they're like a two in one character. And uh, as far as Nickelodeon All Star Brawl goes, I could see some really cool um, attacks just because of the bizarre design of Cat Dog. So yeah, I'm hopeful that character gets in. Seeing them on the kart racing roster uh, gives me hope that, yeah, I think we probably will see Cat Dog in um, All Star Brawl. Next up is the Ninja Turtles, and um, I don't know how people feel about this personally. I'm not huge on Ninja Turtles being in Nickelodeon stuff. I, I know that they had a show on Nickelodeon. I know they are now owned by Nickelodeon, but, um, you know, someone who was born in the 80s and, like, you know, knows old school Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles stuff. Uh, the Turtles are just, they're always separate from Nickelodeon to me. Like growing up, Nickelodeon was a thing and Ninja Turtles was a thing and they were not associated with each other. They were very different um, parts of my childhood. So I get that, you know, now kids have grown up with 
Ninja Turtles being on Nickelodeon, so inevitably they were going to be here. Um, but the other thing with Ninja Turtles is they take up a big chunk of the roster because you basically need to have all four of the Turtles. Um, and then it's like, do you do Shredder? Do you do Splinter? Um, here they did Shredder and the four Turtles. That's, I'm assuming, what we're going to get in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl as well. I do appreciate that the designs for the Turtles in All-Star Brawl are more like classic looking just Ninja Turtle Ninja Turtles and not that particular uh, version of the Ninja Turtles that was on Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon seems to just accept that they own the Ninja Turtles now and that people tend to prefer a more classic looking design than a design that's very specific um, to any one Ninja Turtle uh, iteration. So far we've seen Leonardo, we've seen Michelangelo, but we've seen quite a few stages. There was a sewer stage, there was a stage um, up on top of the rooftops that I saw a mouser. So in Channel 6 News, was, I think was in the background. So it's definitely a Ninja Turtle stage. The sewer stage, I believe, is probably a Ninja Turtle stage. I can't imagine what else it would be. And then there was a Technodrome stage. So I think that's probably Shredder. It's possible we could just get Shredder, Leonardo, and Michelangelo, but I'm a Raphael fan. So if we're going to have Ninja Turtles there, I guess, you know, I'd rather get everybody. Um, and I assume we'll probably get this same lineup here. Especially with that Technodrome stage, I really do think each character is going to have a stage associated with them, and that probably is the bad guy character, so probably Shredder. Next up is Loud House. Loud House is newer Nickelodeon stuff. I don't know that much about it, but I know there's like a ton of characters in it, um, and I know it's very popular right now. So as far as like newer Nick Nicktoon shows go, so I could see um, quite a few characters potentially getting in. We already have two. We have Lincoln and Lucy in uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. Uh, on this roster that goes like vertical, uh, it's Lincoln, Lucy, and I think his name is Clyde. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's what we'll get for, for this um, Nick Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl game roster. Uh, I don't know for sure. I don't know enough about uh, The Loud House to like guess at what characters we get from that. Personally, I'd be fine with Lincoln and Lucy, you know, whatever, um, two to represent that series. But um, I don't know how people feel about that. It's a newer show. I'm not super into it, so unsure on that one. Moving on, let's look at the Rugrats. Uh, Rugrats, we have Tommy, Chucky, Angelica, Reptar. That's a cool lineup. Uh, once again, we have Reptar here, so that's something I guess they've been doing uh, lately with Nickelodeon is using Reptar to represent Rugrats. But so far in our... Uh all-Stars Brawl game, uh, we only have Reptar, which, again, I'm a little afraid maybe the babies won't show up. Maybe they don't want the babies to get, like, beat up, you know, um, in a fighting game. Um, but this right here seems like a pretty good Rugrats lineup. Uh, if I had to, you know, cut it down to just four characters, that's probably the right four characters to do. Uh, obviously, Phil and Lo would be cool. Susie would be cool. I'd love uh, Stu or Grandpa Lou or something really obscure um, would be great. But I think our obscure Rugrat thing is probably Reptar, or more obscure, not just the main characters. But I'd love to at least get Tommy and Chucky and Angelica. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, but I could honestly see potentially just being Reptar if they're afraid to have the babies get beat up, which could free up more of the roster space, so it could be good in that regard. Um, but Rugrats was such a huge part of like 90s Nickelodeon. Honestly, before SpongeBob came along, Rugrats was sort of the face of Nickelodeon. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hopeful we at least get some more Rugrat characters besides just Reptar. Uh, right here would be a pretty good lineup. Next, we have Danny Phantom, and we've already seen Danny Phantom in uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. So, yeah, Danny's great. Uh, I think he's probably the character to represent Danny Phantom. It's it's a cool show. There was a lot of characters they could pull from, um, but just if it's all Nickelodeon stuff, I feel like Danny's probably going to be the only Danny Phantom character representing that show. And one reason we might only get Danny is... Um, just looking at this roster, and, and this sucks, I, I hope uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl doesn't do this, but so far from what we've seen with the characters, kind of looks like it sort of is. Um, Danny Phantom and I guess Avatar are sort of the only shows from that like mid-Nickelodeon period. We have like newer stuff here. We have Loud House, we have Ninja Turtles, um, and then we have older stuff, and SpongeBob kind of goes throughout all of it. Um, but we don't have, like, like where's Fairly Odd Parents? Where's Jimmy Neutron? Where's My Life as a Teenage Robot? Like, I'm not seeing a lot of that stuff. Um, and so, I don't know. I don't know if it's, like, Butch Hartman and Nickelodeon, like, don't, like, they clash now or something. Because Fairly Odd Parents used to be, like, it used to be just, like, SpongeBob, Fairly Odd Parents, a little bit of Jimmy Neutron for the, uh, Jimmy Timmy Power Hours. But, like, you know, it was mostly Fairly Odd Parents in that, like, late 2000, early 2010 period, it feels like. Um, 
but I, I see no Fairly Odd Parents here, which is such a weird omission. Um, but to have Danny, I, I don't know. I don't know how Nickelodeon feels about Butch Hartman at this point or something. I don't know if there's like bad blood there. It's the only thing I can think of why Fairly Odd Parents wouldn't be here, but also no Jimmy Neutron. Um, so yeah, it's it's a little strange. This is more of a older Nickelodeon show, um, but we do have Nigel in the All Star Brawl, and I don't see any Wild Thornberry stuff here. So you know, it's totally possible that uh, we do get some shows that aren't in this kart racing game, um, but will be in All Star Brawl, which I, I actually really hope that happens. Angry Beavers would be cool to get, Rocket Power, Doug, you know, stuff like that. Um, so hopefully, maybe we will get Jimmy Neutron stuff, maybe we will get Fairly Odd Parents stuff. But seeing the the um, trailer so far for All-Stars Brawl, not seeing Fairly Odd Parents, not seeing Jimmy Neutron, um, and then looking at this roster made by um, uh, what was it Game Mill Entertainment. Um, yeah, I'm a little I'm a little worried, but like I said, we do have Wild Thornberries in um, All-Star Brawl, so they will do. Th there will be different things. It's not just going to be one to one, but I do think this roster is a good idea of what we might get. So yeah, I'm a little worried we won't get Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, and those those other mid uh, Nickelodeon shows. But I hope we get more than just Danny Phantom uh, in this new one because it's just weird for them to do only old Nick and newer Nick and and just ignore that that midpoint period where a lot of people now have nostalgia for that. Like that isn't necessarily um, that used to in my mind that's like that's modern Nick, but we're actually like sort of like three eras in now. There's like 90s, 2000s. And then 2010s and current. Um, so, yeah, I, ho I hope we get more than just Danny Phantom and Avatar stuff. Next up, we have Hey Arnold. Um, perfect lineup here. Arnold, Gerald, Helga. That, that makes sense. That's perfect to me. Um, we'll see what we get in All-Star Brawl. So far, we've only seen Helga. So I suspect Arnold will at least happen. Um, and it, with stuff like Powdered Toast Man, Nigel, Reptar, uh, I, I'd rather them do some more obscure stuff. Uh, hey Arnold would be great to do like Stoop Kid or Pigeon Man or uh, just like Grandpa even if they want to get too obscure. Uh, something like that would be great. But I think it'll probably be uh, Helga and Arnold and maybe something like Gerald. Next up, the Avatar representation is really basic here. We have Aang, we have um, Korra, so just original Avatar, and then Legend of Korra. Uh, yeah, I mean, I suspect we'll probably get both these characters. They're perfect for a fighting game, and I know there's like going to be a big push for more Avatar stuff. Um, I forget all this stuff. I think there's like a Netflix show or Hulu show. I don't know. Something's being made with Avatar, I think. Um, and I, I think there is a push to kind of revive that and do more with it, because I think I think Avatar was like the most watched thing on ne I think it's Netflix. Uh, on Netflix or something like that for a while there, and I think that woke Nickelodeon up to like, oh, people actually like Avatar, despite the uh, M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> So um, I think some Avatar stuff's going to be pushed by Nick, so I suspect we'll see that uh, in Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl as well. But it'd be nice to get more, like Zuko would be cool. Um, you know, there's a lot more characters you could pull from uh, the Avatar and Legend of Korra series. And then moving on to this bottom row, this is like my favorite row here, this is like really old school Nick stuff. We got Ren and Stimpy, we got Invader Zim, we got Rocco, and two characters for each of those, it works really well. I, I suspect Ren and Stimpy might do like a duo thing or something like that, they don't necessarily need to have to be separate characters. Uh, Zim and Gur we've already seen are like a du duo character. Um, Rocco's Modern Life, Rocco, Heifer, Filbert, you know, that, that'd be a great lineup. Um, but again, matter how big the roster is, at least getting Rocco would be cool. I'd love to get at least something from Rocco. Um, we have Oblina from Our Real Monsters, which I don't, you know, isn't on this. So again, uh, just like Nigel Thornberry, things that aren't on here can definitely, like series that aren't on this roster, can still get into All-Star Brawl. Um, this is no one-to-one -one thing, um, but just an idea of what we could get. So with Oblina, are we going to get Ickis? Are we going to get Crumb? Um, without Rocco at all in the game so far, are we going to get a Rocco character? I hope we at least get Rocco. Um, so yeah, this these old school um, Nickelodeon shows, they're a little more uh, with the older fans. Uh, they had some mature elements. Uh, Rocco, Zim, and Ren Stimpy are all known for having like mature elements kind of slipped under. The, I don't even know if it was slipped under back then. It was kind of just, it was in the shows, um, but people just didn't care as much back then. So, uh, Also, we've seen revivals of, I think, all of these. Ren Stimpy, a, a while back, got a revival, and then Zim and Rocco recently got, I think it was also Netflix, um, th like there was a, the Zim movie, was it uh, Enter the Florpus or something like that. Um, it was good. It was really good, actually. Uh, Rocco got um, a movie as well. I forget the name of it. Something... Static Kling. It was Rocco Static Kling. I just looked it up. Um, and that was also pretty good. So, uh, And then Harold got the Jungle movie, finally. So all those are like older Nickelodeon shows that Nickelodeon has, in more recent times, put some effort towards. Um, so I suspect we'll definitely see stuff uh, from them. Rocco being the only one missing so far from All-Stars Brawl. 
Nebellion over on Twitter also wrote, apparently the Nickelodeon fighting game has rollback netcode on supported platforms, according to a dev on the Discord. A PC version is apparently coming as well. So if we're believing this dev on the Discord, um, then it has rollback netcode, which means it might be better than Super Smash Bros. Ultimate when playing online, um, which is insane. Again, with uh, Ludosity, the people who made Slap City working on this. Um, I've also seen some people talking about this game has like wave dashing. I, I don't I, I don't know if I saw that. I have to go back and watch the trailer again. Um, but yeah, this game might actually be pretty good, which is, uh, I don't know, it's like super exciting because you kind of want like a Nickelodeon Smash game or I want a Nickelodeon Smash game would be cool. But you think to yourself, well, it's going to be some shovel where it's going to suck. Um, but this one might actually be decent, which would be great if they support it with like DLC and had, you know, <laughs> if this, <laughs> this game comes out, they keep adding characters to it. It has a good online. Like maybe it could be an actual um, com a competitor to um, Super Smash Brothers. I think one of the problem with all the Smash clone games is a lot of them just people don't care about the characters as much. There's stuff like PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale where people did care about those characters. They could have had a better roster. Um, but then the game itself isn't that... It's kind of shallow. It's not that good. It doesn't play as good as Smash does. And then you have some Smash clones that do play pretty decently, but the characters on the roster are like, eh, you know, I'm just I'm not that into it. Um, it doesn't have that crossover appeal of Smash. This... Uh, what can rival Nintendo with a cast of characters that I would want to battle it out and, and play like Smash? Nickelodeon has that possibility, so um, this is pretty exciting. If the game plays well uh, and they choose some good characters and if they also continue to support the game, like if it actually did get DLC and a bunch of characters that really cared about the roster, I'd be super into this. Um, I would actually make legitimate content going forward, not just this video. And then this is probably our best way of guessing at uh, who we might see on this roster. Over on Twitter, at underscore Mimikyu said, on Target's website, it shows the box art and you can make out some characters like Catdog and Ren and Stimpy. So this is apparently the box for the game on Target's website, but they have everyone obscured. I assume that's not going to be the final box art either. So um, yeah, they might actually be kind of teasing out characters with this. Especially because the trailer here says, plus many more surprises. And we have stuff like, we have Helga, but we don't have Arnold. We have Oblina, but we don't have Ickis and Crum. So they might actually be intending to slowly reveal characters to us, especially if the box art that's on Target's website is, um, you know, anything to go off of. If they're blocked out all the characters, then they're sort of doing a Smash thing here, uh, which I am I am all here for. I am, I am all in on that. That's great. Um, that's awesome. So hopefully we'll get, like, character reveals in the lead-up to uh, whenever that fall release date actually is. Okay, so let's really dig into this box art then, as this is probably the best way we'll be able to guess uh, some of these characters. Some of them seem obvious, actually. I'm not looking at this. I can see uh, some Nickelodeon characters already. Uh, so let's take a look. Um... Start up here at the top and we'll, we'll work our way down. So starting off, uh, pretty obvious up here, we have Powder Toast Man. We already have him announced, so yeah, there he is. He's in the game. Um, moving down, Reptar over here. That's also pretty obvious. And Oblina. Uh, all these characters already revealed for the game, so nothing um, too exciting there. Then right here in the middle, I am pretty positive this is Ren and Stimpy, it looks like. That's probably Stimpy. That is definitely Ren. Um, so Ren and Stimpy in the game, um, confirmed pretty much if, if this box art is real, which it's on the Target website, so it probably is. Um, Patrick, obvious uh, shape of Patrick. That's a nice thing with cartoon characters. One of the rules of animation is to make sure the silhouette for the character is um, something that you can, you can tell the character is just by their silhouette. So a lot of these are, are pretty obvious. Um, over here, this one was a little tougher who this character is, but I'm pretty sure it's Korra. I think this... Right here, pretty sure. Doesn't Cora have like a like that, and her hair is probably up or something. Um, I think that's Cora, and this is her arm. I think I think that's Cora right there. Moving on down. Uh, speaking of that, I think this is Ang. Obviously, we have a hand here. I don't really need to outline the whole hand, but I also see like robes or something, and I think this is Ang's bald head right here. So this is probably Ang doing some sort of uh, stance. I think this might be his leg as well uh, right here. So I think this this character um, is, is Aang. And there's probably stuff in front of him and stuff, so it's a little, you know, it's going to be a little obscured. Um, but I think that's that's what we're getting there. Uh, Lincoln Loud right here, pretty obvious. This is almost certainly SpongeBob, uh, pretty obvious. And SpongeBob would be, you know, front and center for a Nickelodeon game. Makes sense to me. Um, tough one here is whose foot this is. This could be... Could be Nigel, um, which he'd be the type of character I could see them having kind of like falling like that. It seems goofy. Um, 
So I, I think that's probably Nigel falling over here, but I'm not positive. It could also be like Carl Weezer or something. Um, I don't know, uh, but I'm thinking it's Nigel. Uh, down here, this is definitely uh, Dog from Cat Dog. And then I think it comes over and around, and I think this is actually Cat down here. I actually think Cat Dog is going to go like, like that across the screen. Um, I don't know if that's their hand, probably. And then this, I thought this was like some character or something, but I think this is SpongeBob's, I've already seen the karate um, glove thing, and I think that's SpongeBob's karate glove coming through here. And then there's probably one more character in the middle here, but I can't I can't tell what or who it is, how it goes. Um, some spikiness to it, so maybe it's uh, Danny's hair, but I'm not totally positive. It makes sense if Danny was there, maybe Nigel falling over here cat dog right here and stuff so the the big ones to get from this are basically ren and stimpy look like they're you know over here um and then potentially cat dog ang and uh cora which i think is probably what this box art is showing us um so i think those are the the characters we can uh, assume are probably in this game based on this mysterious box art uh blocking out everybody our cat dog ang Cora and Ren and Stimpy. And then one final thing, uh, I figured let's just watch the, the trailer again, but I'm going to keep pausing it and just see what we can uh, get from that. Um, I've watched it through a few times, but I'm just going to keep pausing it and uh, I'm going to turn the sound all the way down. It's going to be annoying if I keep pausing it with sound. Okay, so right off the bat, we get Michelangelo and he's on uh, some graffiti here. I think this is the top of the city rooftop like stage that we'll see a bunch of later on. So there he is again, same stage, same looking stage or whatever. Michelangelo, cool, okay. And Lincoln Loud, also on this stage, uh, has a bike, so I don't know if that means he's gonna have a bike as part of his moveset, but comes up on a bike, and a yo-yo. A uh, yo-yo seems almost certainly gonna be part of his moveset. Um, I don't know enough about Loud House to know if like a bike and a yo-yo fit this character super well, um, but they're showing it here, so I assume that's, that's gonna be his main attack. Lincoln Loud, okay. Uh, let's pause it here. So we have Powder Toast Man and Sandy fighting each other, and they're on the Flying Dutchman ship. So that's a cool SpongeBob level, and I don't know, um, I don't know if the levels are going to fit for each character, if there's just going to be levels for different series, not necessarily each character has, like, a home stage. Um, but the Flying Dutchman ship, I don't know if that would really fit Patrick, SpongeBob, or Sandy as a home stage. Maybe Plankton, or the Flying Dutchman himself, um, you know, maybe, like, a like an evil stage or something like that. But again, I don't know if the stage is actually, um you know, are going to be uh, equivalent to characters. Uh, here we see, I think that's Michelangelo, Sandy, and Power Toast Man, and this, and Lincoln Loud. Um, and this is the top of the rooftop stage, which I think I see a foot soldier right here, um, off in the, the corner right, hanging on to like a billboard, and maybe another one over here on the left side. And then you can see the Channel 6 news building. So this is definitely um, a Ninja Turtle stage. And they're kind of blocked by Power Toast Man, but there is a mouser um, going around that, like, water tower. So, yeah, definitely a Ninja Turtle stage. Uh, next, they show off Powder Toast Man. He's punching and stuff. Sandy. And Sandy has a jetpack, um, which is pretty cool. So maybe she'll have, like, some crazy jetpack recovery or use a lot of cool science-y gizmo stuff. Ooh, okay, we saw a stage real quick there. I'm going to pull it back if I can. Um, this is a dump, uh, I see down in the bottom here, it looks like a monster, um, is, uh, that might just be Oblina, cause she looks kinda like she transforms a bit, um, or maybe it's a back, background, um, stage monster element, but this is probably the Ariel monster stage, or Oblina stage, um, the city dump makes a lot of sense. Uh, okay, we can see the mouser a little better there. This is so cool to me. Uh, this might be the only shot that we get, but uh, it looks like Glove World or Ferris Wheel at Glove World is going to be a stage, um, which is awesome. And Lincoln Loud has, like, sunglasses on. I, again, I don't know enough about Loud House, um, but could this game have items, like Smash has items? Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe sunglasses are an item. Uh, they kind of go away, so maybe it's just part of his attacks. Uh, again, I don't know enough about Loud House, but Glove World, that's an awesome stage. All right, we have Patrick showing up here. Oblina showing up, doing a really cool, see her monster scare. Yeah, she looks like she can really transform. Like, look at that. She's got four eyes, and it like looks crazy, so that's pretty cool. Nigel being really weird, so I, I have a feeling this is going to go... Um, I mean, Nigel was weird in Wild Thornberries, but I have a feeling this is going to be uh, more of the meme <laughs> Nigel of today. 
All right, this uh, I want to point out to everybody because just like the cover of the boxes, this pretty much confirms that you know Avatar is going to get stuff. This is clearly um, uh, the the Air Kingdom. You can see Aang's glider right there. So this is probably Aang's home stage. Uh, yeah, Avatar definitely in the game. Again, here's uh, Channel 6 news building in the background there. Uh, so this is a graveyard, which I was thinking, oh, maybe it's uh, real monsters? I don't know. They don't really hang out in graveyards. I think it's probably Lucy Loud. I don't know enough about Loud House, but I know she's like goth, dark character. So I think the graveyard is probably her stage. Which leads me to believe each character will have their own stage, actually. Um, okay, uh, so this is the sewers. I'm assuming uh, Ninja Turtles. I see some pizza boxes there. Uh, so yeah, probably one of the Ninja Turtle stages. Again, there's a lot of Ninja Turtle stages because it seems like the main stage they're showing here is the uh, top of the rooftops Ninja Turtle stage. Uh, here's Lucy Loud, who again I think that graveyard probably uh, goes to. SpongeBob with his karate uh, foam finger thing, uh, and Lucy used like an umbrella, so I don't know that might be part of her move set. Uh, Helga here uses a um, pull it back a little bit. Pretty sure she uses a slingshot when she first. Yep, there's a slingshot. And kicks dirt and stuff, so pretty cool. Uh, Reptar uh, looks like he shot a like blast out of his mouth, so very Godzilla, um, pretty sweet. All right, this is the Technodrome. So this makes me believe again, if each character has a stage associated with the character themselves, um, potentially Shredder, because uh, it would have to be like a bad guy stage. And we've seen Turtle Sewer, we've seen the rooftops, um, and then Technodrums. That's three Turtle stages. Uh, maybe Ninja Turtles will just get a lot of stages. Uh, I don't know if they're going to have Shredder and all four of the Turtles, or maybe it will just be Leonardo, Michelangelo, like we've seen in this trailer, uh, and then a third one, maybe Shredder. Um, uh, I, I would prefer, obviously, all the Turtles and Shredder if the roster's big enough. Let's keep going here. Um, okay, that's a cool stage. Jellyfish Fields. It's even named Jellyfish Fields. Uh, I think we see a King Jellyfish a little later in the trailer, so... Cool, it's probably Spongebob stage. All right, here's Zim. Zim and Gurr. Uh, they just call the character Zim, but, uh, you know. Danny Phantom. Lots of cool ghost powers from Danny Phantom. Leonardo. Okay, so we have Leonardo and Michelangelo confirmed. I, I assume the other turtles will be here, Raphael and Donatello. I hope. Raph is, is my favorite turtle. Um, plus many more surprises. And then, okay, so that's uh, looks like Zim stage which is the Urken Armada in the background. Uh, what stage was that? Have we seen... Let's see. I'm not sure what stage that is. Oh, uh, okay, this is Danny Phantom. This is, uh, yeah, it's definitely the Ghost Zone. I can see the doors and stuff. Okay, I didn't notice this stage before. So, yeah, Danny Phantom stage, uh, the Ghost Zone. Makes sense. Pretty cool. Technodrome again. There's the Urken ship, and it looks like... Um, it's got these like robot arms, so I'm wondering if they like attack the the, the foreground or something, um, which would be pretty sweet uh, stage thing. And then we have Zim; he's got his spider legs, so that's probably a really cool thing with him. Probably moves around like a spider. And we see one of the um, the guard gnomes. Uh, so yeah, Zim's probably gonna have a cool move set. Lots of cool stuff to pull from Zim. Uh, let's go back. I think that was yep Avatar stage again. Can't really tell what's happening. It happened a little too fast. We have Powdered Toast Man stage. Um, looks like it's just a kitchen counter. Cool. And the toast pops up. Uh, this is the Loud House, uh, uh, as far as I'm aware. So this is the Loud House stage, probably Lincoln Loud stage. And this looks like it might be a walk-off stage. I don't see, um, you know, everything else has you fall off the sides. This looks like it might be a walk-off stage. I don't see, um, you know, pits on the sides. Uh, there's King Jellyfish in the background. Pull that back for a second. Yep, King Jellyfish in the background. Keep going through. Stage we've seen. There's a Flying Dutchman in the background, so probably not his stage. Or if the stage, the stage has him as a stage element, so um, you know he's probably not a playable character, and that isn't his stage. SpongeBob using the jellyfish net, and then all the characters run at each other, and a bunch of pizza, and kind of tough to see with this stuff right here. Um, but it's like pizza and hot dogs and uh, burgers. That's what it looks like to me. It's a bunch of food. So I don't know if food's going to be a big part of the game where you like get food to replenish your health or something somehow. But um, I suspect because they explode into all this food, it probably is going to be something. And then there's a star, and the star turns into all-star brawl. 
Okay, so that's that's my um, going slow and looking at the at the trailer. There's probably some stuff I missed. There's probably some cool moves from characters I probably didn't see, but that's my uh, picking through the trailer analysis here. All right, guys. Well, I am excited about this one. If uh, more character reveals start to happen for this game, this game gets DLC. Yeah, I'm happy to cover it. I like Nickelodeon stuff. I love Smash games, and this looks like probably uh, you know next to Super Smash Brothers, this would be the Smash game I would potentially actually uh, enjoy if as long as it plays decently. Uh, you know, as long as it's not shovelware, uh, I'd probably actually get into this because I care about the characters. I care about that. Um, you know, crossover aspect of this. So it captures both elements of Smash, both the gameplay and the crossover aspect of like all the Nintendo characters coming together. Um, so they could eventually branch out into like what Smash did with third parties and have it just be cartoon characters, you know, uh, as guests or something, uh, Cartoon Network characters, something like that. Or, uh, you know, if it just starts off with main Nicktoons, you could branch off into real life Nickelodeon characters, you could, uh, or live action shows, you could branch out into Nick Jr. and stuff like that. Uh, I think this has a lot of potential to be awesome if they really want to support it, um, and even if this is a series going forward or something. Totally possible it's kind of a shovelware game. I have high hopes that it'll play decently because of uh, it being from the people who made Slap City, but still, you know, it is a Nickelodeon game. Sometimes these get rushed out and stuff. We'll, we'll see how this one goes. Um, but it'd be awesome if this game is great, and, uh, you know, the roster might be fairly small, maybe just that size of the kart racer game uh, roster, which is, like, decent size, but, you know, with everything they could do with Nickelodeon, I would hope it would be bigger, hope it would get DLC or something, or maybe just sequels or, you know, whatever, see where this game goes. Anyway, I'm sure most people are itching for me to make another Smash video, as it's been, like, two weeks or something since the Mr. Sakurai Presents. I do apologize, guys. I just had uh, a lot of stuff happen, just kind of busy in life, and the video itself is pretty intense. Here's my computer screen uh, right now for everything I want to talk about. So I will try to get that video done uh, like tomorrow, like Wednesday, Thursday this week. Um, that's what I'm shooting for here. Uh, hopefully that will be enough time for me to finally get this one done. There's just a lot to talk about. Should probably be a long video. Um, and I also, I always like to give these ones some time to breathe. So I sort of gave it some time to breathe. Then I got a little busy and then it's been tough to find the time to actually get it done. But I am going to make an after Mr. Sakurai presents Smash speculation video. Uh, you know, just the speculation going into this last leg of uh, Smash speculation before Challenger Pack 11. So that video is coming. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any thoughts or comments about this Nickelodeon game, uh, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to see what people have to say. I'd love to hear what characters people would like to see in this game because my mind's racing. I think it's some lots of obscure, crazy stuff I'd love to see here. So I'd love to hear what you guys want to see in this game. And if you think this game's going to be good or if you think it's going to be shovelware, anyway, let me know in the comments below whatever your thoughts are. Remember to like the video, leave a comment in the section below, and subscribe to Papa Gino's. A Twitter, a Patreon, a Discord.